Hey, I hope you're having a good Christmas break. If you're anything like me, you're probably hoping that you get art supplies for your Christmas presents. I actually asked for a gift card from my secret Santa so that I can go buy some art supplies because you never have enough. But if you are getting starting out on this journey with us towards painting abstract paintings, you might want to know what supplies should you get started with. And like I've said in a couple of my videos now, you don't need expensive supplies, but you do need a few key supplies so that you don't waste money on the wrong supplies. So let's get started talking about our acrylic painting starter pack. Number one, paint. And like I've mentioned in my other videos, I started with really cheap paint of $1 a bottle paint. So you don't need to get started with an expensive brand, but you do need a few key colors to get started out with. You need your primaries, blue, red, and yellow. And you want to make sure your red is not like a burgundy red or an orange red. It's somewhere in the middle. If you get more art student supplies um, type quality of uh, supplies, it's gonna be called a cadmium red. Same with the blue, you don't want a light blue, you want kind of a dark blue. I use ultramarine blue. Two basic colors, white and black. And at first I thought with white you can make anything light, right? Right? And with black you can make anything darker. And <laughs> when I went to painting classes, um, I was actually recommended to get burnt umber. And this is kind of a really dark brown and it's gonna help make any color that you want to make darker be dark without being black. Because if you put black, sometimes it'll just it's, it, it's gonna overtake the other color, so make sure you get some burnt umber to begin with. Actually, of course, a brown that you can use and paint on your paintings with. The other two colors that I was recommended in painting class and that have actually helped me out a lot because at first I thought, well, I can make green with uh, yellow and blue, right? Well, I use a lot of green, so I actually started getting... Um, I actually went out and bought a kind of olive green and I didn't realize at the time that if you get a color like that, it has so much yellow in it. It's really hard to get, like if I ever want to make teal, it's very difficult to get there because it has so much yellow in it already. Um, so if you get something that they call Viridian green, it's a very like middle of the road green where you can, again, add yellow and make it olive add blue and make it more teal, if, especially if you add white. Um, it's just a nicer green, so I recommend that you start with this. And then another weird color that I really like is Burnt Sienna. It's another type of brown, but it's more orangey, and I find that sometimes I get really cool colors when I add this one to another color that I would've, I would've never thought to mix with it, so I'm gonna recommend it to you guys as well. Number three, you're gonna need brushes and a mixing knife. You at least just need one good mixing knife to get going um, and what this does is you use this to mix the colors instead of the paint brushes because you're gonna waste a lot of paint and it's gonna get into your uh, brushes if you use those to mix colors with so make sure you have a mixing knife or some kind of like um, stick <laughs> you know like those like ice cream sticks, I don't know what they're called, but anything like that other than your brush is the best thing to start uh, to get started mixing with. And when it comes to brushes, when I started out, I was using like this cheap foam brush and that worked for a couple of months. And then I upgraded to like a $5 or $10 brush set at Michael's or whatever craft store I went to. And I got some more like this where like, they're, you know, they're kind of medium size, still pretty on the small side, but not too small. And they're all kinds of different sizes. I ended up throwing them away one by one when the bristles got really tough. But then, and only then, like maybe two to three years into painting, I created two really big and really nice uh, brushes. And this was way more expensive. This was like probably some $50. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little bit more. Um, but it was only until I was painting for three years that I gave myself this present of a nice brush like this. Um, and then at the time, I also got this brush, which is another kind of small brush. And this angle brush that's somewhere in the middle. That's really all I was using 
along with my old ones of course the ones that had survived up to that point and something that's very optional but mm, something's kind of nice to have is maybe i don't know what they're called scraping tools <laughs> Um, and you can really use anything, and this is optional, you could use your credit card, you could use any other like tough paper that you have laying around and just scrape the paint to make effects on your canvas or your um, paper. So this is not needed and you can really use anything around the house. Of course, to wash your paintbrushes, you're gonna need a water cup and I really just use a jam jar once I finish my strawberry jam or whatever I was eating <laughs> and you can really just use any container like if you have Tupperware lying around just make sure that it's nobody else's in the house <laughs> you're never gonna be able to put it out again it's gonna get messed up as you can see um, but you don't need anything fancy the final absolutely necessary component is of course paper I use paper that is specifically designed to have acrylic painting on it and you will see it'll say on your cover page if it's made for acrylic paint if it's made for watercolor which can you also use but don't use like sketchbook paper you want something that has a heavy weight you're gonna see that not only is it very thick it has a little bit of texture and i really just like to grab the whole pack put it on my easel and just paint like that sometimes if i get scared and i'm um, I don't want the next paper to get watery or paint on it. I do put like something else in between, but I do like to keep it all together. But you're, of course, you're welcome to just rip one page off and work on a table or as you, you know, anywhere you like. Paper is a really nice way to start. But another uh, option that I never considered until very recently is canvas panels. And these are actually really nice and I wish I would have started using them earlier. It gives you the same texture and effect. Right now it's in a plastic wrap. I have to, it's still new and I don't want to take it off. Um, but the point is it gets you used to the texture of a real canvas. But it's really flat. So it's like way cheaper and you can buy them in packs of, you know, multiples at the supply store. So it's just a cheaper way to get started um, with a more permanent kind of setting, which will be eventually a canvas, right? So for your third option, you can really go with any size. I personally have always used the cotton canvases because they're cheaper <laughs> than like linen or anything like that. So just um, give it a try. You don't have to start here. For me, it always feels a little bit more challenging and scary to go on a canvas. So don't start out with canvases, you guys, your paintings, spoiler alert. They're not gonna be your best ones when you start out. So they're gonna only get better. So don't worry about buying canvases right away. If anything, just buy the canvas paper and or the panel, uh, the canvas panels, and uh, you'll be learning how to paint on canvas without spending a lot of money. And when you give someone a canvas panel for a gift or if they wanna buy it, it still looks really nice, in my opinion. Another option for you guys to paint on would be something like a wood panel. These are, of course, going to be more expensive um, and it's a rougher, but it's a very flat surface. So it really just comes down to preference. It's not one isn't better than the other. I don't like painting on canvas. Uh, sorry, I don't like painting on wood panels as much. And the only reason I have this is because it came in some kind of a marketing gift basket kind of thing at work. And I took this one home because it was just going to go in the trash. And so what I'll do is eventually I'll put gesso on the side and try to cover up these lettering and then paint on it. Unless you just want to use the nicer side, of course, but I always like, I don't want this in the bag, so. <laughs> okay, you guys, and the only other last thing that is maybe necessary, but also optional as well, is a color palette. I've been using this disposable, um, color palette notepads um, where you rip one page off and you can throw it away and it just came to my attention the other day how much waste that's causing in the world so I got really disappointed to hear that so I, I'm not I'm not gonna open up my color palette that I had um, to use next I'm gonna put it away and I'm gonna set it aside for a giveaway that I'll do in the future and instead I went ahead and got myself a Bob Ross color palette and see if it actually works out for me 
and I don't know if you can see it, it's plexiglass. It was um, $15 and I'm going to see how it goes. I've never tried it. There was a big, bigger Bob Ross color palette available, but it was 50 bucks and it was made of real glass. So I'm going to hold off on that one because I don't know if I'm going to drop this, am I going to break it? Am I going to feel like it doesn't work for me? Am I going to go back to the disposable palettes? We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. But instead of buying any color palette thing anywhere, you can also just grab like an old lid of a Tupperware container and just use that and pour your paint onto that. That's how I started. Now really, you could just use anything that you don't mind throwing away or just continue to reuse for painting purposes. Okay, so that was really the last one that you really actually need. Any other item from this point forward is completely optional. And the first one I'm going to recommend you is one that I didn't get onto literally last week. And I'm really disappointed that I didn't start thinking about this earlier. And that's a sketchbook. Because I was always using these paper canvas kind of notepad thing, if you do anything on this page and then you turn it over it's most likely gonna come off the glue at the top and it's just gonna lay around on its own like an isolated piece of paper and that always really bothered me because I'm either gonna keep it because it's a cool painting or I'm gonna throw it away because I did some weird stuff on it that I don't like and I wasn't aware that I was so bothered by this kind of like um, waste that I never actually try to do anything different other than a painting and I never really um, give myself the room to explore so that's why I want to change that and I went ahead and got myself a sketchbook and this one is a very small sketchbook and it's for watercolor but that's the heaviest paper that I was able to find and what could I do in here I could test how my brushes are gonna paint the paint that I have, what my painting's gonna look like. I could try out different styles of painting. And because it's binded together, I'm not gonna feel like, oh, I'm just gonna waste that paper. Well, no, it's gonna stay here on the record and I can look back on it. And I wish I would've started doing this earlier because it would've really helped me not waste <laughs> so many layers of paint on random ass canvases or paper that if I would have just explored what it moved like, what it looked like, and see if I liked it on here, for example, or anywhere else, um, I wouldn't have gone through so many trials and, you know, uh, mistakes. And not that it's wrong to make mistakes, but like I said, it just bothers me to throw away those big pieces of paper just because I wanted to see like what one color, what one color would it look like. But if it's like, if I just have a page here where I try what colors look like, then I can just continue reusing it. I don't I don't know why I'm maybe it's just me like <laughs> it's just so stupid. Maybe it's just me, but like I don't know why having this binding changes it changes everything for me and I'm gonna start actually using and exploring and playing a lot more with my paints and with my brushes, etc. So I would say please get a sketchbook if you can, or you can even get started with a sketchbook because this sketchbook has um, perforated uh, perforated line where you can just rip out the page and you're left over with a single you know piece of paper with paint on it like like you would this one so it's it's the same thing so I would actually say just probably get started with a sketchbook would be the best idea okay you guys I only have two more optional items for your starter pack and one of them is these gel mediums this is what's gonna make your paint thick and you can make peaks when you put the paint together you can see the brush stroke um, if you just try to do those with the paint right out of the tube when it dries you're gonna come back to your painting and it's gonna be flat and no matter how many layers of paint you try to apply it's just not gonna get you the same effect so if you like to splurge of any on anything from the beginning I would recommend this. Um, it's like really cool to play with texture. So if you're being adventurous and are starting with canvas panels or canvases, you of course want gesso. And this is just the first layer that's gonna go directly on the fabric. If you put paint directly on a cotton fabric, 
what happens is the fabric is going to absorb all the painting you're going to waste a huge amount of paint because you can't spread it around the canvas that's something i learned the hard way <laughs> no matter how much water you put in the paint because it's just going to soak it up so you want to get started with gesso unless you want like a stain effect on your fabric but even then if you're gonna then not do the stain effect on top of that it's probably gonna just soak up all your paint and you're gonna have to use a lot more paint so remember to to give just a, a consideration if you're starting out with the fabric items and last but not least is a color wheel this is not at all optional because unless you're like a color genius <laughs> you're gonna probably need to refer to your color wheel and see what colors are good what um what kind of colors you get together if you mix them i have one that has like windows and it helps me know if i add blue to this what does it look like etc etc this is completely optional of course because now we have google on our phones and our laptops and we can just look it up or even just put it as a question on Google and it can come up what colors look good with blue and yellow. So you don't need to spend any money on this one, but you're gonna want one that you can refer back to. Okay guys, and that's really all I have for you today. I hope you're having fun with your family, friends, or your loved ones that you have around you. I'm looking forward to eating a lot of good food and just sitting around and joking and hearing stories around my family. Um, hope that you're having a good time as well. I will see you in the next video. Sign up for my newsletter to be told when I have a new video. And remember to subscribe here and my Instagram if you want to continue talking about world domination and painting. So see you in the next video. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year if I don't see you by then.